Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are recapping the series between the Golden Knights and the Dallas Stars and it's been a rough end to the season here for the Vegas Golden Knights as their season uh, unfortunately comes to an end um, the other night. We're going to be recapping the Vegas Golden Knights uh, regular season, their postseason, of course, going into the summer. What do things look like for the 2023 Stanley Cup champions heading into the 2024 offseason? So, that out of the way, let's take a look at the Vegas Golden Knights. There's a lot to discuss here with the Vegas Golden Knights. You know, in all honesty, they should hang their heads pretty high here. I know that's hard to do. You know, you won the Stanley Cup last year, and then you lose in the first round this year, but the reality is, if the Western Conference standings had been a little bit different, there would have been a real possibility that these teams would have met up in the Western Conference Finals. So it's one of those matchups where they just happen to be playing in the first round. One of these teams unfortunately had to lose, and unfortunately for the Vegas Golden Knights, they happen to be the team to lose this series. It was a really respectable series for them, though. Um, you know, if you guys have watched my videos as Golden Knights fans, um, my prediction was that the Dallas Stars would win the Stanley Cup this year. So it's not like the, the Golden Knights lost to an inferior, bad team that limped their way to the playoffs. That is not the case here. They lost to a really, really good hockey team that is potentially going to go on a cup run this year. So you have to put that in perspective, I think, first things first. But with that out of the way, you know, looking at what the summer could look like for the Golden Knights is really an important factor here. Um, because right now, this team is not going to be the same going into next year. Because they have the third highest um, amount of money spent on their team of any team in the NHL. Over $92 million spent on this Vegas Golden Knights roster, which only Tampa Bay and Toronto had more expensive rosters this year. Again, LTIR things like that also in effect here but let me see if i could find our window capture apologies for that but what we're looking for is um on cap friendly we're gonna be looking at the golden knights because i think it's very interesting some of the things that could be happening um to this team let me get that up bingo there we go that's what i'm looking for okay so let me get rid of this sorry guys this is pretty bad video on my part. Okay, there we go. Apologies. So what we're looking at here is the Golden Knights forward roster. So who will be a UFA this summer? So the first one is Jonathan Marchus. So 33 years old, making $5 million. That money will come off the books. Anthony Mantha, his money comes off the books. A lot of that money was retained. Uh, that's why the RS is there, retained salary. So that is Anthony Mantha. This one is a big one. Chandler Stevenson, um, William Carrier, some originals in Stevenson and Carrier. Those are some misfit Golden Knights. Those are some of the originals from the expansion draft. And then some other guys like Mikey Amadio, Pavel Dorfeyev, um, just to name a few of those forwards. And then again, just to go through everybody, uh, on, the, on the blue line, you got Alec Martinez and Yuri Patera. So that is your pending UFAs for the Vegas Golden Knights. So breaking down the forwards, uh, Jonathan Marcheseau, that's a tough one because that's an expansion pickup, right? That's one of the misfits. Um, it's going to be a shame, but in all honesty, I think he will be leaving this team, unfortunately, um, this summer. So no more Jonathan Marcheseau. Uh Anthony Mantha, I think they're going to say kind of good riddance. I mean, I hate this, to, hate to be so crude, but uh, Mantha didn't really do so much for the Golden Knights. He was just depth. Uh, Chandler Stevenson's a big one. I think they're going to do everything possible to try and keep him. But with their current salary cap structure, I just don't see how they have the money to keep him, even if they really, really wanted to. So that should be interesting. And then, of course, William Carrier. I think he's going to be a casualty of the salary cap, but that'll be a loss that they're willing to go with, but don't want to. Again, he's been with this team since the expansion for a reason. They really, He's been a very valuable player to that team. I just think... He's going to find more money on the open market than what Vegas is willing to give him. And Pavel Dorfeyev, uh, he's going to have arbitration rights this summer. I could see him potentially going down that path and maybe being a good extra player for the Golden Knights next year. 
but I could see his role actually being more increased if they lose some of these guys like March or so and Carrier in particular. Um, I could see a little bit more ice time for a guy like Dorfeyev next season. Uh, looking at the blue line, Alec Martinez, like I said, I mean, it'll be a good riddance, but I think the fans really like him in Vegas. Um, that'll be a guy that they're okay with losing, but it's definitely not the best thing in the world. He is a good defenseman there, but he is 36 years old, and I wouldn't be surprised, considering they lost in the first round, that's one of the decisions they're willing to make here. So that's probably it for Martinez. And really, the next thing is going to be looking at what they do in two years, because you've got Theodore, McNabb, and Nick Haig all going to be pending contracts in 2025's end of season look so the good news is they have a little bit more time to figure that out but i wanted to get into that because if the golden knights are looking to figure out what's going to happen with this team long term like i said the first thing to go i think guys like carrie and march or so are gone same thing with martinez and mantha but they have to look more long term because because I think both Shea Theodore and Nick Hague are going to be a little bit more expensive on their next contracts. So for the Golden Knights, they're going to have to figure out not only how to make cap space in the immediate future for this year to keep Chandler Stevenson, they're also going to have to look at what we're going to do two years from now for McNabb, Theodore, and Haig. Because those three guys in particular are pretty big-time defensemen on the Vegas Golden Knights. So if you're doing the management side of things, they got to be careful with what they do this summer is it going to sacrifice what they do in 2025's offseason? And again, Golden Knights aren't thinking that way, but to some extent, especially with players like Shea Theodore and Nick Haig, you really do have to be thinking about that. So as much as everybody says, oh, well, there's enough cap space, just enough to keep Chandler Stevenson, well, that might be sacrificing what you could keep next year, okay? So that's where I kind of am right now with the Golden Knights is where are they going to find the cap space? So in the event that they need to make some moves, let's just take a look and play armchair GM. Where is any bit of fat that they could trim on this current roster? I don't think Zach Whitecloud's going anywhere. You know, it, for what he's making, that is a guy that is worth keeping around at that cap hit. That's a really good number for Zach Whitecloud. And they obviously signed him to that long of a term for a reason because they really like what he provides. Noah Hannafin, there's a reason they kept Noah Hannafin. There's a reason they signed him to that number they did. I see a future where he is a long-term Vegas Golden Knight. So that's the plan there. I don't see Alex Petrangelo going anywhere, but you do wonder, you know, he's making $8.8 .8 million, and do you want to lose Shea Theodore, McNabb, or Nick Haig to keep Petrangelo? That's going to be a really tough decision next year for the Golden Knights if they decide to go down that route, but that will be very interesting. Um, Goaltending, I think Aiden Hill is your guy. I don't see any real change there. Logan Thompson's locked in till the summer of 2025. No real changes there. Like I said, the big changes for this team, at least for this summer, it's going to be up front. Um, I'm going to be interested to see how they handle guys like Brett Howden. Do they want to keep Brett Howden? I would say yes, right? Nicholas Ra, Nicholas uh, Wa, I would say they want to keep him around, right? Three million dollars. He's a good net front presence, and especially if Marchessault is leaving this team, he's a good player not only on the penalty kill but on the power play as kind of the 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 guy in front of the net causing a disturbance, right? But now you're starting to see the ramifications of bringing in Eichel, Stone, Tomas Hurdle. Bringing those guys in, it is at the sacrifice of some of the more tenured players. Like a March or so. Like a Stevenson. And potentially, as soon as next year, Theodore McNabb and Haig. And that's kind of why when I look at this Golden Knights team, it's very puzzling. Because yes, obviously they're trying to win the Stanley Cup right now. That is the end-all be-all. But not only is it the end-all be-all for right now that you're sacrificing. You're sacrificing the future mightily. Like, mightily they are going to lose one of McNabb or Theodore next year. And depending on what happens with Nick Haig, I really like him. He could be a guy that gets traded out. So the Golden Knights are going to have some tough decisions to make this year. We knew that. But now they've even made things more interesting in the extension of Noah Hannafin, which we expected, but that Noah Hannafin extension has made it maybe more clear and crystallizing the inevitable fate of the rest of the guys that aren't re-signed on this Golden Knights roster. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. 
with money and everything put into the picture, who would you like to see the Golden Knights keep on this team? Because I think they ideally would love to see William Carrier, March or so, and Stevenson all come back. I just don't think the money is going to be there for this team. And, and like I said, the reality is when you're trying to win a Stanley Cup like the Golden Knights are, they're going all in. They've been using their assets accordingly. It is going to come at the price at some point. And they did win a Stanley Cup last year. So it's not like this is a situation where, you know, everything is kind of broken loose and things are terrible. This is still a very good hockey team. As long as Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill are, in, are all good in between the pipes again next year, the Golden Knights are going to be right back here again. I just wonder what moves George Mc, uh, George McVeigh. I'm going to put some money in the jar for that one. Kelly McCrimmon has his hands full with this team, but I'm really interested to see what or if any changes he actually makes to this team. Is he just going to let some guys depart and bring in younger players that they've been developing to come in and fill those roles like a Or are they going to look to some guys in the prospect system or in Henderson to try and replace some of those guys? It's really going to be interesting to see how they handle that situation. But I'd love to know what you, the Vegas Golden Knight fans and the fans across the National Hockey League, if you were the GM of the Vegas Golden Knights, what would you do going into this offseason? Like I said, I don't think the tonal alarm bells have to go off quite yet but this is a situation for vegas where you know the window is now and they did lose in the first round of the playoffs so whether the perception is good or not doesn't matter they lost and they want to come back next year and win a stanley cup and hopefully they can do a little bit better during the regular season where they don't have to play the western conference champion dallas stars and maybe they'll be in a little bit of a better position. But I'd love to know what you guys think, as always. Guys, our merch shop is in the description down below if you'd like to check out some of our new merch. Um, we've got all the links to that in the description down below. We've got tank tops for the summer, hats, t-shirts, sweaters, mugs, beanies, all that stuff down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.